Thanks for joining us for this episode. And I do want to remind you to make sure that you are following us on Apple Podcast, Spotify, or wherever you may listen to podcasts. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash at church advance. And you can actually watch video versions of each episode. We'd also really appreciate it if you could leave us a five-star review and share this content with other pastors and church leaders. We want to help as many of these folks as we can. And so we'd really appreciate you sharing this episode with your friends. Well, thanks again for joining us as we begin today's episode and continue to advance a reformation of fellowship, partnership, and gospel hope amongst Bible-believing pastors and churches. This is Church Advance with Brian Sams. Hey everybody, welcome back to Church Advance Podcast with Brian Sams. I am in the house here with Luke. Luke, yeah. good to see you, man. Here. Right here in Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah. And we're here for the Church Advance Conference that starts mm-hmm. tonight. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we thought, hey, while we're going to be together, let's go ahead and connect. Let's do it. And do as much recording as we can possibly do while we're here. And of course, we're going to be grabbing all kinds of content from the conference, some of the Q&A, some of the sessions, of course, the preaching. And uh, there's going to be uh, about 50 to 75 ministry leaders ascending on this place between tonight and tomorrow. Uh, had folks register even as late as last night. Mm. And uh, some great guys and great families. We're going to have a good time, man. So welcome back. Good to be back. And uh, man, so so today's going to kind of be like a resource center mm-hmm. episode. Uh, I do, obviously, uh, I tell people all the time, my job is, you know, I'm kind of a nerd, really. I think all pastors in some ways are. I spend most of my time kind of at the library. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and I study, obviously, a lot. Before you came over this morning, I, I spent time uh, writing my sermon for Sunday. And I want to talk about, uh, in sermon prep particularly, the 10 most useful commentary sets mm. that I use. So before I get into the list, Luke... I want to mention that I am I am talking about sets, not individual commentaries. I'll get back to that in just a moment. Second thing I would say by way of introduction is almost all of these are what we would call homiletical commentaries. So there's there's, there's three basic kinds of commentaries. There's devotional. That's going to be things like Matthew Henry, where the writer is really focused predominantly on application. Uh, spiritualizing text sometimes. Uh, then there's, of course, exegetical. Sometimes these are even commentaries based on the original languages, mm-hmm. Greek and Hebrew, um, or, they're, or, or they're just really more technical based on exegesis, etc. <clears throat> then there's like kind of like something in the middle that are more homiletical. They have the exegesis. It may not be on the surface as deep as some, but it's there. And then they also have that practical application. In some cases, even have like some tips, pointers for outlining a passage, uh, different insights into the passage. And so, so every one of these, I think, fits mostly into that middle category. If they err one way or the other, it's going to be the exegetical. So I think that's the most helpful kind of commentary that you're going to find. Now, one more word about um, sets as opposed to individual books before I jump right in. And that is uh, when you are preaching, um, it is, I think, best to build your library based on the books that you're preaching on. Hmm. And really, the best commentaries on books, um, or some of the best commentaries on books, are you know, written by a specialist. They wrote a, a commentary on this book. Only somebody like MacArthur or, or other rare person is going to write a good commentary like on every book. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times sets are edited sets and then individuals write an individual commentary. For instance, New American Commentary, the the, the Revelation one, Paige Patterson wrote the Revelation one, but he didn't write the rest of them. Mm. So when you're preaching a a book of the Bible, you can, you know, the best thing to do is kind of go 
and grab some lists. Um, uh, different people have these lists, best commentaries up, throw it out there on your favorite mm -hmm. social media thing. Hey, what's your go-to commentary on Philippians? What's your go-to commentary on this? And I certainly do that. Like I'm preaching through Revelation right now, but then this summer I'll be doing Galatians on Sunday morning. And right now I actually have already begun uh, purchasing books, uh, et cetera. And then, you know, I just thought of one other preliminary thing I want to say, and that is um, I purchase all these or utilize all these digitally. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting in my office right now. Everybody walks in this office. Usually that's one of the things they comment on, like, where's all your books? And, yeah. I'm, and I'll hold up my phone and say, well, they're all kind of here, <laughs> you know, or my laptop. Uh, you've got to decide, like, what works for you. Me, it's all digital. I only have books in my library for, well, I don't have a library, but, yeah. but like physical yeah. copies are just decoration points. Yeah. So my secretaries, when they created this office, they were like, hey, you got a few books we can like make it look nice. <laughs> and so whatever. Yeah. I mean, th that's all they're there for. Yeah. Um, but there are three avenues for digital books that I use. And maybe this is helpful. If you're old school and you want to buy print, go for it. My friend H.P. Charles. Uh, who will be with us on Friday? He uses all print predominantly. I think he I think he crosses over a little bit. But where I'm predominantly digital, he's predominantly print, mm -hmm. and there's a little bit of overlap. Almost mm -hmm. everybody overlaps in some way. Yeah. Um. So I use I use I use three tools. Okay. I use Hoopla, and I know I've mentioned it before on the podcast. Hoopla is uh, the library's digital side. Mm. So every library now pretty much has. Di digital, uh, a digital library in addition to their physical library. So like old school library, you have to go check out a book, check out a DVD. Now you've got eBooks, audio books, movies, streaming, you know, uh, music even, which I'm sure few people use that feature. But the point is all through an application and your library card, you can go download audio books and books, hmm. check them out. I think it's 21 day checkout, just like you go to the library. It's a absolute hack. Wow. Um, there's commentaries on there and other things. Then the second one I would use, it used to be called Scribd. And so I wanted to give an update on that one too. It's not called Scribd anymore. It's called Ever And. Okay. So that's one word, Ever And. And it's, um, it's a yellow icon with like the fancy and symbol. Mm. So this used to be Scribd. This is like um, Netflix for books. And you can, as long as the book is being used there, you can use it, highlight it, whatever. Of course, if you cancel your subscription, you don't get to keep your highlights and all that. And the other trick with that one is uh, all the books they have on there don't stay on there forever, mm. just like yeah, Netflix. Like Netflix. You know, a series yeah. or a movie may run out, okay. but they're still like golden. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and I pay, the, of course, Hoopla's free. Everand is a thirteen ninety nine subscription, I think, worth every penny. I think it was Kurt Skelly said it was like uh, one of the greatest uh, small monetary investment that's yielded the greatest results, yeah, yeah. and I I completely agree with that. So so, and then the third avenue that I use for the digital is Logos, and I'm learning that when I'm buying a book, uh, a commentary, I'm buying it through Logos. And I know it, you say, well, I can get it cheaper on uh, Amazon Prime. I can get it cheaper. Great. But you can't do with it what I can do with it with Logos. So it's the, the other day, I just crossed into Revelation chapter 12. Actually, I'm in 13 this weekend. Uh, but MacArthur's commentary goes Revelation 1 through 11, then 12 through 22. Mm. So I just had to purchase the next one. And you purchase it, and it automatically downloads and syncs into your library. Mm -hmm. Then when I search Revelation 13, it pulls it in the list with all the other ones. Mm -hmm. You know, the convenience factor is just yeah. too good. Yeah. Um, so uh, anyways, you can certainly feel free to fire some questions uh, to me. I shout out to my friend John Haley from Logos, who, who has been with us uh, on the podcast yep. and has also uh, done some training here at the conference as well as other conferences I've been to. And I know John, we'll maybe, we'll maybe tag John in the notes here. John can help you with Logos. I highly recommend it. Your church probably gives you a book or, or allowance. I know a lot of guys that I know do. Man, spend, you know, bite the bullet, spend some uh, getting Logos. I, I use it every single day of my mm. life. Okay. Now, but what I really want to talk about right now 
And Luke, I don't know, the probably best thing is for me just kind of walk through these. Yeah, I was going to say, our, uh, I noticed we should have talked about this off the mic. There's yeah. 10 here. Is this in order of like your 10 best or is it no particular order? No particular order. I, I kind of wrote them as I came to, which, which may mean that they're in order of my favorite. Okay, so should we reverse it? Maybe we could reverse it. 10, okay, just yeah. Some anticipation. Yeah, yeah, maybe we'll do that. Okay. Let's, let's do that. Let's so, do that. So, um, number 10 is uh, the preacher's commentary. And, and, and there's all kinds of books that have a similar name, mm -hmm. but this is a set of both Old and New Testament. Uh, it, the way you could identify it on the cover is it's like a sundial, mm -hmm. kind of a, a, a orangish yellow color. I was trying to look up the editor, but it's, it's specifically called The Preacher's Commentary. People like Stuart Briscoe and others wrote in it. It's really, really good. Um, it's a 35-volume set edited by Lloyd Ogilvie, produced by Thomas Nelson. Mm -hmm. So this is a pretty healthy set. And again, I, I, should, I don't think I need to say this. My audience would know me well enough. I don't agree with everything. I don't buy everything. Yeah. But it is, it is particularly helpful. Again, uh, I use it, use it often. Uh, number nine. Number nine, the Teach the Text commentary series. Now, I ran into this because of Scott Duvall. Now, Scott Duvall is a guy that wrote a very help, helpful book on um, uh, how, to, how to study the Bible. And the name is actually slipping me right now as I'm talking. But um, Scott Duvall is an excellent Bible student. And he wrote, uh, like for instance, his, he's got the Teach the Text series has one on Revelation. And I've been using it in the series. If you see a Teach the Text commentary in part of that series, I would highly recommend that because Scott Duvall in particular is an excellent writer. Uh, number eight, now number eight is going to be the one, probably the more technical one of this whole list. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, but I, so it's, pr some people probably consider it more exegetical, but it's the pillar New Testament commentary uh, uh, series. You're going to have guys like Leon Morris and other, I don't know if D.A. Carson writes in that, but these are going to be, these are like, these are deep. These are the deep guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, one guy said, be careful of the wetsuit sermon, you know, go down deep, come up dry. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't see that as a conflict of interest. You should go deep. Mm -hmm. You should know the word. You should know what's going on. Obviously, you need to learn how to take that and transform it into preaching mm -hmm. uh, with application and so on and so forth. But as far as like straight knowledge of what the text is talking about, um, pillar is really good. Number seven is going to be the Bible knowledge commentary, probably of this list, the most simplistic uh, of them all. The Bible knowledge commentary is going to come from the old Dallas Theological Seminary crew um, and uh, like John Wolver. I think John Wolver may be the, the, the number one writer on this. Wolver, classic dispensation. So this is going to be very dispensational, Baptistic type commentary. Again, you're not going to get incredible depth here, mm -hmm. but you're going to get a good overall mm -hmm. understanding. I think it's a two volume set. Um, number six. Uh, number six is one of my favorites, New American Commentary, kind of a Baptist commentary. Mm -hmm. This is coming from Holman. This is coming from Nashville. Um, and um, this, like, like I mentioned earlier, Paige Patterson's commentary on Revelation is gold. Mm. So, you know, many of you may not know Paige Patterson. Paige Patterson was the old president of Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary. Uh, he had that recent thing where he was accused of, of something and got fired and terminated. As it turned out, he was exonerated from all charges. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a classic Me Too yeah. uh, movement fail, and, and, and too many people threw him under the bus too early. Mm. Bottom line is, he's a great preacher. If you've ever heard him, classic. He always says, I'm a country boy who stumbled on some education. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite teachers, favorite preachers, and an excellent commentator. And he, that's within that broader series. Mm -hmm. Number five is going to be probably the most devotional out of this list. Mm -hmm. um, the Christ-Centered Exposition Series. Now, this is edited by Danny Aiken, who's the president of Southeastern Seminary. Guys like Tony Morita um, uh, write in this. Guys like um, uh, Platt, David Platt, mm -hmm. Danny Aiken himself. Uh, these are, these are, I'm thinking these are predominantly sermons. Mm -hmm. 
uh, but they're but they're sermons by guys who do the work, and then they're put in the print form. And the one on Revelation's been particularly rich. I've used it. Pretty, I think it's for. I think they got them in every book of the Bible. I actually, I think there's a couple of them on these shelves. Uh, I probably shouldn't look away from the camera, but uh, yeah, they're good. I, I'm pretty sure if I look. It's one of the them, like few. Oh, they're there. There's two of. There's two of them right there. Okay. There's two, Exodus and Verses of Samuel right nice. there. And uh, so, hey, I do have a couple print books. Yeah, they're in there. Um, those are good. Now, let me give you a warning about overly devotional commentaries. First of all, commentaries in general should not be used super early in the process, hmm. I think. When you're dealing with backgrounds, context, that sort of thing, that's more reference book, certainly just reading of the text. Commentaries should come in somewhere in the midstream as you're, as you're compiling data, verifying things. Devotional commentaries should come at the very end because, you know, you're going to get a lot of illustrations in them. You're going to get a lot of application points. I'm always trying to be careful that I don't, my application illustrations and stuff are not, are not too uh, shaded by other people. I want my own material. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Dr. Farrell used to say, you know, milk a lot of cows, churn your own butter. Yeah. So I want to churn my own butter when I'm preaching. But as H.B. Charles said, you would be foolish to ignore 2,000 years of church history and theologians in your sermon preparation. And mm -hmm. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. But in the scope of exegetical to devotional, you're going to want to do it in that order mm -hmm. as far as what you read. Exegetical is going to be more teaching the text. Devotional is more application. And I think you want to, I think you want to go in that order. But it is very, 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 very good. Mm -hmm. Holman New Testament Commentary Series. That's uh, number four on my list. Love this one, man. I use I use this one a lot. Uh, Holman again is uh, SBC material. Uh, this has a lot of exegetical points. Then usually at the end of the chapter, it's got like a whole teaching outline. Again, I maybe never have used the teaching outline. Yeah, but. But I think it's nice to see a commentary flow mm -hmm. and then at the end kind of synchronize it all together mm -hmm. so that it it comes out uh, in a kind of a package. Mm -hmm. So Holman's good. Um, Max Anders, I think, writes a lot for the Holman Commentary Series. I found it incredibly helpful. Now we're getting my top three. Top okay, three. Top three. I like the top three. This is it. Okay, I love the top three. And the more I'm looking at it, Luke, I'm thinking... Number three is actually number one, so okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to flip okay. the script. Let me go with number three. Classic. Okay, there's not a person probably that preaches who hasn't heard of this. Yep. And if you are a preacher and you haven't heard of this, you know, I guess I'm just going to say shame on you. Yeah. What are you doing with your life? <laughs> <laughs> you know, kind of thing. Warren Wiersbe, Wiersbe the, the Bible exposition series, yep. the old B series. <laughs> um, so, so, so good. Uh, somebody in ministry at one time had the, the PDFs given to them and told to them uh, to spread them out far and wide. Hmm. So if anybody listened this deep into the episode and you want those, give me a call. I can send them to you. I've got the whole thing on okay. two PDFs. Wow. It's phenomenal, man. I mean, so the old B series was like individual books and the, you know, the individual book, the old little paperbacks. But they also have them all put into two volumes, which I just highly recommend. You, Wearsby looks devotional on the surface, but when you really look at what he's saying, he's done all the homework. He's just he's just a teacher, mm. so he's done this incredible work, and he's made it simple for all of us uh, to grab a hold of. Uh, man, you gotta like you gotta like Warren Wearsby. Mm. He was a pastor, a famous Bible teacher, super well respected and loved by everybody, and uh, just fantastic. Number two. Number two is MacArthur. Mm. Uh, now, he only has the New Testament commentary series. Uh, uh, to my knowledge, he hasn't begun or probably won't because I think he's in his 80s now. Yeah. It doesn't appear that the Old Testament series is going to happen. Somebody may take his sermons and teachings in time and string them together. I hope they do. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think about MacArthur, man. Um, we might disagree on a few things. I mean, I'm not Calvinistic. He certainly is. Mm -hmm. Um, but he hasn't really missed much, mm -hmm. you know, as far as I can tell. Um, I mean, you pretty much go to his commentary, you're going to get a sound biblical explanation for what's going on. Um, I mean, his revelation stuff has been gold. 
Uh, very, very good. It seems like of all the commentaries I read on Revelation, I end up getting to MacArthur, and he seems to be kind of, in my mind, the standard mm -hmm. of you know faithful conservative biblical interpretation in the 21st century. Um, you know, you got to if you're conservative, okay. People that are not conservative don't respect MacArthur. Uh, MacArthur is the fundamentalist of the evangelical world. Yeah. yeah. Now they all—that's what they would all call him. Mm -hmm. Now fundamentalists think he's a compromiser. Yeah. I mean, they think everybody's a compromiser. Yeah. <laughs> but MacArthur is a bulwark, oh. like a a he is like a Alamo type Bible believer. Oh. So he's not right on everything, and neither am I. But I mean, fundamentally, mm -hmm. his commentaries are going to steer you in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. man, I'm a hundred percent go on that. But over the last few years, this last commentary set has taken its rightful place on the pinnacle for me, and that's the preaching the word commentary. The editor is Kent Hughes. They're in white uh, sleeved paper uh, books. Mm -hmm. I just glanced over there. There's one right over there. Yeah. I think that one's that one's James. Okay. I have not seen a miss here. Um, uh, Isaiah's is by Ray Ortland. Isaiah's commentary. I mean, they're they're just really, really, really good, mm -hmm. solid Bible teachers cranking out that bad boy. Um, there's others, I'm sure. Maybe uh, our listeners would uh, chime in, yeah, and uh, give us maybe your favorite go-to. Um, you know, you know, maybe I'm certainly op open to hear like your favorite go-to individual commentaries, but these are sets. Mm -hmm. um, and so, Luke, I, I'm I have grown in my appreciation of commentaries, and I find it to be now essential and critical to the whole process of sermon prep mm. uh, in my life. And, and uh, I know that most pastors should and, and, and would benefit from commentaries as well. Yeah, absolutely. Some, some resources for you there as we, you know, we're in the mindset right now of, you know, preaching. We know H.B. Charles, because we are, we are at the Church Advanced Conference, not sure when this episode's going to drop, but, yeah. you know, H.B. is going to be talking all about it. And I'm sure he'll touch on some of these resources, yeah. the resources he likes as well. Absolutely. Um, by now, the listeners may have already heard that again. I'm not sure what yeah. order this is going to drop. No, that's but, good, man. You know, Phil, you're, you know, I always found it uh, to be helpful as I'm going through life, generally speaking. To just anytime I see a list like this, mm -hmm. um, I want to grab something. Yeah. Like I go every year at the end of the year, I read multiple best books of list. Mm -hmm. You know, from Christianity Today, from Gospel Coalition, Jimmy, uh, not Jimmy, uh, Kevin DeYoung, um, Tim Challies, just, just all these guys, Midwestern Seminary, and others that put together these lists every year. My top 10 theology books or my top 10 Christian living books. Well, man, look, these guys are brilliant and they love the Lord and they love the church. Why not look at their lists and go, man, I, I could, I could use that. Yeah. And yeah. Ho hopefully that'll be the same for you. If I can help you with anything else on individual commentaries, I try, I mean, I haven't preached through the whole Bible, so I don't have them all. Yeah. Um, yeah. but, uh, but, most recently, Revelation has been has been yeah. particularly rich. Yeah, so, yeah man. That's good. So hey, let's uh, let's uh, jump in and share some resources, share your thoughts, and we'll see you guys next time on the Church Advance podcast. Thanks again for joining us for this episode, and we really would appreciate it if you could leave us that five star review, and then of course share this content with your friends. We want to help as many pastors and church leaders as we can and be sure to of course follow us on apple Podcasts, spotify and wherever you may listen to podcasts and go ahead and subscribe to the church advance youtube channel at youtube.com slash at church advance this podcast is hosted by brian sams it is co-hosted and produced by myself luke clayton and the team at mustincrease.com. If you want to connect with Brian, be sure to head over to his website at briansams.com. 
Well, we really look forward to seeing you again in the next episode as we continue to advance a reformation of fellowship, partnership, and gospel hope amongst Bible-believing pastors and churches right here on Church Advance with Brian Sams. Thank you.